medicine man, or shaman as he's called, is the most unique individual in Indian culture. While the tribal chief is responsible for military and political leadership of the tribe, the shaman is much more than that. He is the spiritual leader with unquestioned power and authority, and he's responsible for every aspect of the mental and physical well-being of the tribe and the individuals in that tribe. For centuries, the secret ceremonies of the shaman clan have been kept secret from the outside world. But now, for the first time, they are being revealed. Tonight on PM Magazine, we'll meet one of the few remaining shaman chiefs and learn about his intense desire to preserve his people's culture. We'll also be meeting the artist who is recording those secret ceremonies on canvas. It is truly an act of love and dedication. There is no figure in modern society to compare with that of the shaman. He is medicine man, priest, psychotherapist, medium, and guardian of the tribal conscience. He is all of these rolled into one, and yet he is far more than any one of them. Most Americans identify the shaman as the medicine man of the American Indian, but shamanism is a worldwide phenomenon, and one whose ceremonies have been kept secret for generations. But now a project has begun that will make public these secret ceremonies and explain the significance of each. The man behind the project is 70-year-old Algonquin Shaman Chief Kipu, and he well understands the dangers of such an undertaking. He knows the hesitancy of the majority of Indian leaders. At first, they were. But now, all day the crow trail, all handsome birds come, walk each other, running out, little wolf. They all say the same thing. If you do it right, it can be beautiful. If you do it wrong, we will kill you. And they won't kill you. But Kitbu realizes that the traditions of the shaman clan are slowly being lost as the years pass, and he's determined to preserve the culture of his forefathers. Well, in 1952, when my grandfather died, and my father was still living, he talked much about the preservation of culture in the ways of the tribe, and he could see it going, but he was afraid to talk to white people in general. Having completed 40 years of research, Chief Kipu has joined with Western artist Chester Fields to produce a series of paintings depicting the life of a shaman from three days old till his death at 105. The project will include all of the major rites and rituals of the shaman clan, and above all, will be accurate to the smallest detail. It takes a lot of study and a lot of research. It's not something that normally when I'm doing a painting, I can uh, go out and take photographs of different animals and composite myself and no problem. But this uh, it was a little different situation, and it, it has to be it has to be right. I mean, you can't do something wrong in this because it's basically for history's sake. The entire project will include at least 24 paintings, five of which have been completed to date, and the research on each painting continues in earnest. Hey, kid, at you home? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, kid, you know, I got that nice. Oh little man, little. that's nice. I really like that. They've got some questions on these yeah, other pictures over here, thing, you know? Yeah, that's not nice. man. What, what yeah. one of your pictures is it? Ted Arsenal is the executive director of the Museum of Native American Cultures in Spokane, Washington, and he explains the historical significance of this incredible project. If you're looking at the ancient petrographs, this is what the Indian culture were trying to tell people then, what it was about, the stories, the buffalo hunts, and how it happened. And this is what you would call a, a highly sophisticated form of modern petrograph. When the English conquered the Algonquin tribe, Chief Kipu's grandfather had to pledge one of his offspring would attend the best white man's school. And Kipu was chosen to attend Oxford University in England. But Kipu's education had only just begun. With that knowledge, I began to divulge into things that I didn't quite understand. And searching for visions, I said, hard watch, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so it happened. It hit me like a thunderbolt. I was alone by myself in the woods. I was maybe 20 odd years old. And this thing hit me, and I was filled with a knowledge I can never explain to a living man. From that day on, I knew more than most people know in a lifetime about Shaman Clan. And I made a vow that I would find the medicine men all over the continent and give them honor and give their traditions some respect. For everybody says, a medicine man, a conjurer, black magic, all this hogwash that's mixed up with all the societies, and I had to straighten it out. And to straighten it out, Kipu visited nearly every tribal leader in North America. 
and has accumulated an incredible knowledge of Indian culture. The big thing here is we are doing something that's never been done before. I'm doing it along with Chet and many other old Indians. And the, every old man I talk to starts crying. I can see the feeling, and I feel the same way. It's so deep and so emotional, and we are saying to each other, our ways are pure, our ways are clean. And, oh God, we need to tell the world that we are an honorable people, and not a bunch of so-called savages running naked in the forest. The first painting in the project gives us some idea of the sincerity and dedication of the shaman clan. It depicts a ritual not unlike that of many religions. Three days old, the child is taken to a mountain and held up by his grandfather, saying, Great Spirit, light beyond the sun, I give this to you. Give me the knowledge to direct him. And then he will follow a way of a people and the way of our God. The series then continues through the five stages of shaman development. The birth before the sun, the rights of the rabbit warrior, the rights of the black face warrior, the dog soldier society, and the ritual of Sundance, all portraying the importance of these ceremonies to the survival of the entire Indian race. We can, as Americans, we can look at ourselves and we can see some bad things that we're not too proud about ourselves. And the Indian actually has a few faults, but I don't think we should go in and change civilization and, and just detect the bad side. I mean, they have a lot of very beautiful things. And uh, those things we have a lot to learn from. And our society is getting so cluttered now, especially our environment. And the Indian has a lot to teach us from that standpoint. And it's things that we should learn pretty soon before it's too late. The final picture, still only in the planning stages, is symbolic of the entire Indian nation and seems very much like a self portrait of Shaman Chief Kipu. And in the finale is the lives of the old age who teach the children the wisdom of the people. For they have seen the pain and they have felt the sun. They have felt the rain, the cold, and the winter. They have suffered and they have cried. And the faces are wound from the wound and the cruelty of the hot sun. And yet the mind is alive and wise and knows no wisdom that a flower has bloomed and given its beauty to the world. The eye. You know, there is so much that we don't understand about the shaman's role in Indian culture. He is at one time the most complex and the most simple of people. Well, next Wednesday night, June 23rd, we'll take a closer look at the life and philosophy of a shaman chief, and we hope you'll be with us then.